Greetings my chess friends and welcome to this little chess video and we're going to look at how we can beat up pet opening systems that our opponent employs and what are we referring to when we are referring to pet opening systems well, these are opening systems that are sometimes not considered very mainline but are played by amateur players sometimes in the hope of surprising us for example we might meet something like B4 the so called the Polish opening or the so called orangutan opening and when we're playing a game of live chess sometimes we can be surprised by this and faced by this and we get ourselves into trouble because we don't know what to do. Other instances might be the move G4, the so-called grob opening, and we think, well, how do I play against this? We can have, of course, lesser ideas like this, the Nimzo Larsen attack, or White Wolf Fianchetto, the kingside bishop like this, and we're not really sure what to do. Other instances of course include very well known openings like this, the Coley system. How do we play against this? Or sometimes amateurs love to play a system like this, the London system. Well these are what we call pet openings and they're not often played by chess professionals but they are played often by chess amateurs and in the hands of amateur players they can be very effective and sometimes we get phased by them when we are playing a game of chess because they come as a surprise well I'm going to advocate four principles that can help us so that we do not get faced when we are facing pet opening systems. For example, if our opponent gives us a centre, for example, he plays the bird opening. If he gives us a centre, then we take the centre. That is the wise thing to do. If he plays a move like this, we take the centre. So this is the first principle. The second principle is if they are planning a system where they fianchetto their bishops, then we build a pawn phalanx against this. For example, if white plays a bishop here and fianchetto is a bishop along this long diagonal, well we simply build a pawn phalanx against this bishop and it blunts the bishop. The same can be said If he fianchettles the queenside bishop, we can build a pawn phalanx, which blunts the activity of this bishop. So this is the second principle. And the third principles are fairly well known. We will simply develop our pieces, we will castle, we will post our queen, and we will connect our rooks. So these are the simple principles that we are going to use to defeat pet openings so that we will not get phased. So the openings that we are going to cover are many and varied and I really hope that you get something out of this little chess video. Okay, the first pet opening that we are going to bust is this move here, 1b4. It's called the Polish opening and sometimes it's called the orangutan opening. Now it has that name because in times past a chess master was visiting the zoo during a rest from a tournament and this idea came into his mind. Now, I'm not entirely sure who the master was, it might have been Tartakower, but the idea stuck in his mind and the name stuck also. I'd really like to know if he actually pl played the move in a tournament. I suppose that he did. And to see whether he won or lost. Or perhaps drew. 
but the name stuck, the orangutan opening. Now, the idea is fairly simple. White will try to dominate the central dark squares with the use of this flank pawn covering c5 and the dark square bishop will be fianchettled and of course cover d4 and e5. Now the key to opposing this opening is to take a firm grip on the e5 square and never let it go. Um, we therefore, before white can get his bishop to b2, we play the move e5 ourselves. And as we have mentioned in the introduction, we are going to build a pawn phalanx against this dark squared bishop to blunt its diagonal. Bishop comes to b2 as white had planned. And we support the center with the move d6, building our solid pawn phalanx. e3 is perhaps the most popular choice and the idea is that white will try and use this pawn on e3 as a pawn lever to try and attack the e5 square either with the move d4 or in this instance with the move f5 f4 now here we prepare a counter fianchetto making the point at e5 super solid and opposing the dark square bishop on b2. f4 is played. We continue our idea. Bishop g7. And here white piles on the pressure with the move knight to f3. Now you can see that there are three pieces attacking the e5 square. The pawn in f4, the knight on f3 and the bishop on b2. Now we could defend this square with a knight with a move like knight b to d7. But here I'm going to advocate a very dynamic approach. We're in fact going to play a pawn gambit. And we're going to gambit the e pawn. Because even if white takes on e5, we realise that the pawn on e5 will be weak, it will be pinned, and it will be easy object of attack. So here we play the move knight g to e7, gambiting our e pawn. White accepts, and we castle quickly. Now, if white plays any other move than d4, well, we simply play knight to c6 and we will get our pawn back with a good position. But just to show you what happens if white tries to keep the pawn, he must play the move d4. And here we recapture with d takes e5. Now if white takes with the pawn, well, we simply exchange queens and black has lost, white, sorry, has lost the right to castle. So white takes with the knight. Knight takes e5. Now here we have the excellent move, knight to f5. And we have a double threat. We have a threat of queen h4 check. And of course the e3 pawn is hanging. So we have an excellent position simply for the sake of a pawn. So this is a system that I am advocating against the Polish opening 1b4 or as it has came to be known the orangutan opening. And I sincerely hope that you try, try it out in your own games and see what an excellent position that you get. So Thank you very much for watching this little chess video and I wish you well with your own chess.